Hello everyone, welcome to the class. In this video, I am going to explain about the synthetic applications of star kinamine reaction. So this video is the continuation of the previous lecture where we have discussed about the alkylation, monoalkylation and dialkylation of star kinamine reactions. So in this video, we are going to explore some other synthetic applications of the star kinamine reactions. Let us discuss another example that is take cyclohexanone and treat with pyrrolidine under acidic condition by using dehydrating agent followed by dihalo alkane dihalo alkane where the hydrolysis which gives you a bicyclic compound so that means you can also explore this star kinamine reaction for the cyclization reactions <coughs> so what are the organohalides we are using here? They are dihaloalkanes. So, the mechanism involved in this reaction is the first step is the reaction of this cyclohexone with the pyrrolidine under acidic condition with the dehydrating agent gives you. Enamine and enamine, which is a nucleophilic source. Now, let us treat with this organohalide. So, first, in the first step, the nucleophilic attack takes place at this electrophilic center, which gives you aluminium monoalkylated aluminium 1, 2, 3, aluminium ion. Now, again. The abstraction of this proton by base again produce enamine. So this enamine also shows the nucleophile so that it attacks at the electrophilic carbon so that it gives you By, by alkyl means bicyclic derivative. This bicyclic derivative, once you do hydrolysis, generally gives you cyclohexanone derivative 1 2 3 1 2 1 2 3 or we can also write like this which is a bicyclic derivative so this dialkylation of dialkylation in star kinamine reaction also explored to synthesize this bicyclic compounds the alkylation of the star kinamine reaction so generally it gives you a poor yield because there is a competition of the n alkylation or C alkylation during the reaction. For example, once you generate this enamine, there is a possibility of attacking this nucleophile from either this 
oxide that means nitrogen or from this carbon that means this nitrogen can attack onto this uh, electrophilic center or this C alkylation also can have possibility but during this alkylation process generally it prefers the N alkylation majorly so that this reaction gives you two different type of products with alkyl halides especially not with allyl ebenzyl see this product is N alkylated product and this product is C alkylated product whereas this N alkylated product is major and this C alkylated product is minor so this is the process of alkylation that means when you use a simple alkyl halides in the stark enamel reaction suppose if you consider another substrate treat this substrate with the pyrrolidine and with under acidic condition followed by dehydrating agent which gives you enamine when you treat this enamine with the methyl iodide generally it gives you two different type of products one is C alkylated product and one more is N alkylated product whereas this reaction produces N alkylated product majorly so this is the reaction of alkylation stark enamine alkylation with the simple alkyl halides which are producing poor yields because the competition of this N alkylation and the C alkylation during the reaction. So when you use simple alkyl halides, you are observing N alkylated product majorly. To avoid this N alkylation issue, you can use a reactive alkyl that means organohalides such as allyl halides or benzyl halides. So you can overcome the problem by using this benzyl halides or allyl halides. What happened in this case, for example, when you take this enamine, enamine, treat with the benzyl chloride, for example, I am taking benzyl chloride. Now what happens, this reaction first it start the N alkylation process, that is N, the lone pair of uh, nitrogen acts as nucleophile and then back at this electrophilic center and gives you N alkylated product whereas this N alkylated product what happens this undergo migration this undergo migration onto this uh, carbon which gives you a C alkylated product so that is the advantage of this benzyl halide usage in this reaction once you get this C alkylated product you can go further hydrolysis of this aluminium salt which gives you your required alkylated product so this is the reason why we are we are using more reactive organohalides in this stark enamine reaction when you go for simple alkyl halides you will end up with an alkyl alkylation whereas if you go for more reactive species for example if you take benzyl halide so it gives you first an alkylated product followed by the migration of this benzyl from n that is nitrogen to this carbon which produce c alkylated product followed by hydrolysis gives you the alkylation that is alkylated product so we can also do the alkylation process with the aldehydes and the primary amines which generally gives you amines so we have already discussed that the primary amines are not suitable substrates for this generation of enamines because the imine has more stability than the enamine during this condensation process but we can also we can also perform this stark enamine reaction or alkylation process 
with the aldehyde and the primary means. For example, let us take a simple aldehyde and treat with the, an amine which should not contain an alpha hydrogen. When you treat this, the condensation of these two gives you imine, right? Imine. So, to this imine can undergo enamine, imine tautomerism, but the imine stability is more as we discussed earlier. But we can make this imine for this alkylation process by treating this imine with uh, either Grignard reagent, phenol magnesium bromide, or LDA, lithium disopropyl amide. What they do? They do the abstraction of the proton from this acidic center. This both LDA or phenyl magnesium bromide can abstract this proton so that they generate this uh, carbanion at this position. Okay, suppose for example this LDA is abstracting this pro proton from this position so that this carbanion shift onto this nitrogen which gives you a species. For example, I'm taking phenyl magnesium bromide. So this one is also equal to enamine. That means this again alpha beta. So this beta position also acts as a nucleophile. Now just treat this with the any electrophilic carbon. anything you can treat it this one or this one any other either these two so now what happens here the alkylation of enamine takes place as usual do the hydrolysis get your aldehyde back this also gives you alkylated product see so which is that means the imines the imines formation from the primary amines and the carbonyl compounds which is generally difficult to involve in this kind of enamine reactions but that is also have the possibility by converting this imine to enamine by treating with the either Lignard reagent or a strong base. We can also take another example like uh, long chain aldehydes. Long chain aldehydes can treat with the tetrabitalamine. Be careful, this amine should not have any alpha hydrogen here. And treat this with the uh, followed by Pignot region phenyl magnesium bromide, which can abstract the proton from here. can treat this with the any alkyl halide which gives you a required alkylated product followed by hydrolysis of this mean also get this alkylated products or alkylation process from 
carbonyl compounds you can also take another example for cyclohexano again cyclohexano treat with this tertiary beta amine which gives you amine the treatment of this amine with the phenyl magnesium bromide which gives you a salt Substitution reaction. You see, alkylated. Right. You do the hydrolysis. And get back to your alkylated part. That's all. So you can also get this alkylation process from aldehydes or ketones. Treat with the primary amines, which is difficulty. What we have discussed earlier. So far in this alkylation process, we have discussed with the examples of symmetrical carbonyl compounds. Let us discuss about the unsymmetrical carbonyl compound. For example, I am taking 2 methyl cyclohexanone is 2 methyl cyclohexanone when I treat with the pyrrolidine under acidic condition followed by treating with the alkyl halide and hydrolysis. This reaction gives you two different type of products. Where the first A, this A product, the alkylation happened at the less substituted side and in the B product, the alkylation happened at the more substituted side. In this stark enemy reaction, generally, this reaction predominantly gives you the alkylation at the less substituted side. That means this less substituted alkylated product is the major you can up absorb like 85% whereas this uh, mono that means highly substituted alkylated product will be minor so in this way this stark enamel reaction is called as visio selective reaction visio selective reaction visio selective reaction so when you compare with the earlier base catalyzer reactions you are absorbing the both either more substituted or less substituted alkylated products or acylated products in mixture in a mixture may be equal or one is major or minor but in this case generally you will get only less substituted alkylated product majorly and it's many years 85 percent that is depends on the substitution present at this position you may get 90 percent above 90 percent of this less substituted alkylated product what is the reason behind this less substituted alkylated product let us Think about this enolization, that is, sorry, enamine formation. Once you get enamine, you have two different type of possibilities here. Suppose you have enamine, so there is one kind of enamine, and there is another possibility. The enamine formation can take place from. So there are two possibilities you can expect during the generation of enamines. For example, if you consider here, the nucleophilic center is present at this beta position here. So and also when this nucleophile approach towards the electrophile, but this nucleophile when it is approaching to others, this is filled more sterically hindered okay whereas in this case this field very less sterical repulsions so that is the reason the enamine that means the 
formation of less substituted enamine is the predominant in this stock enamine reaction so that this formation of mono substituted that is less sub sorry less substituted product is alkylated product is the predominant one the only thing is the steric hindrance the steric hindrance presented when it is in mono that is uh, when it is in highly substituted enamine formation so when it is less substituted enamine formation you will feel less sterical interactions so that it can easily and interact with this electrophilic carbon center during the alkylation process that is the reason this tarkin enamine reaction considered as reserve selective reaction where one isomer is major that is less substituted isomer is the major one so the same thing you can also get by taking by taking this substituted cyclohexanone by treating with a base called LDA which is sterically bulky base lithium diisopropyl amide which also abstract the proton from less hindered side so that this nucleophile also attracted the electrophile and gives you less substituted so you can get this less substituted Visio selective product by from this star kinamine reaction or this LDA with using this strong base. So that is the reason star kinamine reaction has important synthetic application in this organic synthesis where it produces visio selective products majorly. Coming to the other application that is oxidation process oxidation process so you can also do the oxidation process using this enamines as synthetic intermediates the reaction is same by taking a simple cyclohexanone treating with the pyrrolidine under acidic conditions using dehydrating agent followed by using an oxalating agent either acid halide or acid anhydride and do the hydrolysis which gives you oxalated product so the mechanism is simple the first step the reaction of this carbonyl compound with the pyrrolidine under acidic condition followed by dehydrating agent which gives you enamine. enamine this enamine which is having a nucleophilic carbon so that it can also attack at this electrophilic center which gives you azylated aluminium salt and then do the hydrolysis of this to get your required product so this is all about the azylation process a simple thing you have to use here the source is either acid halide or acid anhydride of course in this azylation process also you can observe the N alkylated process or the C alkylation. That means it can also first it involve in the N alkylation process like in benzyl chlorides. If you observe this, it gives you N azyl ammonium salt still this azylium is a good electrophilic center because see this shifting of this electrons towards this nitrogen makes this carbon more electrophilic so that it gives you C alkyl product via an alkylated product so first sorry an azylated product so first it underway an azylation 
which makes this carbonyl carbon more uh, electrophilic center so that this C alkylate C C carbon carbonium or C nucleophile act in this more electrophilic center and gives you C alkylated product. So in the case of benzyl halides, that is alkylation process. In the case of azylation process, the process may start with the N alkylation or azylation process followed by C alkylation or C azylation by migrating the azyl or alkyl group from the nitrogen to carbon. So the other application of this stark enamine is the Michael addition. So since the stark enamine that is enamine is acting as a nucleophile, it can also involve in the Michael addition. What is Michael, Michael addition? The addition of nucleophile to an alpha beta unsaturated system to an alpha beta unsaturated system which gives you one four addition product which gives you one four addition product so that is called Michael addition reaction so in this reaction again you can start with the cyclohexanone first you form the enamine by treating this cyclohexanone with pyrrolidine and uh, acid followed by dehydrating agent and then treat with the alpha beta unsaturated system for example this alpha beta unsaturated system which bears an electron withdrawing group so this electron withdrawing group may be cyanide or keto group or ester so the addition always takes place at this soft electrophile which gives you one for addition so that take here for example i'm taking an alpha beta unsaturated ketone followed by hydrolysis which gives you which gives you a one four addition product so like one two three four five so one two three four two which is which is one two three four five one two three four five so one five dicarbonyl compound so that means when you treat this enamine so what kind of mechanism involved in this you see so as you know already enamine generation takes place by treating with this cyclohexanone with the pyrrolidine under acidic conditions followed by dehydrating agent when you have this alpha beta unsaturated system this nucleophile which attack with this profile which is soft electrophile gives you a Michael addition product Hydrolysis of this aluminium salt gives you one five dicarbonyl compound. So the other synthetic application of the star enamine reaction is Michael addition. So the you can treat this enamine which is a nucleophile or michael donor you can treat with this michael acceptors so the michael acceptors are here the alpha beta unsaturated system which are having electron withdrawing groups such as cyano keto or esters anything they can act as a michael acceptors then this enamine this nucleophile can act as a michael donor so this donor attack at this acceptor and gives you michael adept So these are all the synthetic applications of this stark enamine reactions. So you can use this stark enamine as a nucleophile source in different kind of nucleophilic substitution reactions or nucleophilic addition reactions. So so far we have discussed about the alkylation process, 
with the star key amine reaction this alkylation can give you mono alkylated products or di alkylated products so during this you can prepare bicyclic compounds like a cyclization reaction among them we have discussed that allyl or benzyl halides are more reactive than the alkyl halides and these alkylation generally proceeds via an alkylation followed by the migration of group from nitrogen to carbon and the main advantage of this alkylation with this enamine reactions over the base catalyzed reactions are you can use milder conditions here and you can avoid the self condensation okay you can use milder condensation and you can avoid uh, self condensation process and you can get excellent yields during this stark enamine reactions so these are all advantages of the stark enamine alkylation over the not only alkylation alkylation process over the base catalyzed general base catalyzed reactions so we also discussed about the acylation process where this reaction also proceeds via the n alk n acylation followed by c that means migration of acyl group towards the c that is carbon nucleophile and we have discussed about the michael addition michael addition michael addition so where the stark enamine can also act as a michael donor and it can attack onto the michael acceptors where there is alpha beta unsaturated system which are having electro electron withdrawing groups so there are other applications there are lot of vast applications with the stark enamine nucleophilic source wherever you can find the electrophile so the best that is this uh, stark enamine can considered as a best nucleophilic source so wherever the electrophiles present wherever you are generating electrophiles you can treat with the electrophiles and get the nucleophilic substitution reactions or nucleophilic addition reactions so like enolates this stark enamine the stark enamine reactions also gives you cc bond formation use the products with the cc bond formation in organic synthesis so this both both enolates and enamines are best synthetic intermediates for the formation of cc bond formation in organic synthesis and thank you